Imagine a sea change in the global economy. Imagine. In 2006, several of the wealthiest foundations hired a consulting firm to review scientific literature, to consult with more than 150 climate change and energy experts, to create a plan designed to win, a plan to create global cap and trade systems, and a binding agreement on greenhouse gas emissions. Imagine, they didn't ask you, the people. They decided for you. They didn't ask your government. They funded local environmental groups to act as if there was a grassroots demand for these policies. Policies that would make them richer and make you poor, make you into carbon serfs. These unelected, unaccountable philanthropies with special tax preferences predicted that cap-and-trade legislation would prompt a sea change that washed over the entire global economy. And the report included little to no discussion as to the sponsoring of new energy technologies, whether by government or philanthropy. Notable was the absence of any meaningful discussion of social, political, or cultural dimensions of the challenge. For you, the result is broken promises, empty wallets, empty pockets. It was an insidious method. Design to win had an insidious method of changing domestic climate and energy policies. Fourteen years later, billions of dollars of your tax dollars subsidizing environmental charities, governments implementing a price on carbon or carbon tax. You are subsidizing their renewables. You have been taxed to destroy coal, natural gas, and oil industries and jobs. Environmental groups have forced through greenhouse gas reduction targets and policies, all to serve the interests of the world's wealthiest philanthropies, with no regard for the desires or financial constraints of you, the public, with no regard for domestic sovereignty. Do you want to live in Bill McGibbon's world? Climate catastrophist Bill McGibbon wrote The End of Nature in 1989, in which he wanted to dramatically reorganize society to end our addiction to fossil fuels, economic growth, and consumerism. He believed there would be a pastoral future free of consumerism or material ambition, that we would rarely travel, that the world would be experienced via the Internet that we'd power our society with wind and solar and divert our wealth to developing nations and thus set a moral example for China. Well, that's what we're living now in the COVID lockdowns. Is this the life you want? McGibbon's group, 350.org, has been funded by those designed to win philanthropies. Imagine they did all this and didn't ask you, but you have to pay the price. Imagine how the world was before they caused a sea change in the global economy. Who will call them to account?